Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and welcome back to Chemistry. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the concept of density. Now, whenever we say density, perhaps you might think of an old joke that goes something like this that you see on the screen. Which weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of lead? And a lot of people will think about that and they'll get that wrong. But of course, you think about it long enough and you realize, well, both of them actually weigh the same. And then sometimes you get a, a chuckle out of that. But the fact is, intuitively, I think we know that lead has a greater density than feathers. Lead has more density. There's something about it that makes it feel heavier than feathers. Well, why? is lead denser than feathers? Well, primarily there are two reasons. The first reason is that the atoms in a chunk of lead simply have more mass than the atoms that are found in feathers. If you look at the periodic table, you'll find that lead, which has the symbol Pb, has an atomic mass of well over 200 atomic mass units, about 207.2 in fact. On the other hand, feathers are made primarily of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, probably some nitrogen in there, and maybe some other elements as well. But if you look at the atomic masses of those elements, you'll find that all of them weigh much less than lead does. Hydrogen, for example, weighs about one atomic mass unit. Uh, carbon has a mass of about 12 atomic mass units. Oxygen is about 16 atomic mass units. These atoms are just a lot less massive than atoms of lead. Now, another reason why lead is more dense than feathers has to do with the way that the particles are compacted. I think we know that particles in lead are just closer to each other than the particles in feathers. Whenever you have a bag of feathers, it sure seems like there's a lot of uh, fluffiness to that bag of feathers. As opposed to lead, there's not a whole lot of fluffiness to that at all, is there? So these are the two reasons. Generally speaking, things have greater density than others because the atoms have more mass and often the atoms are compacted more closely to each other. Well, as we calculate density in the laboratory, the actual equation for calculating density is that density equals mass of an object divided by its volume. Now, let's try a problem here. Here we have a block of wood that measures 5.0 centimeters by 6.0 centimeters by 3.0 centimeters. The mass of the block is 75.6 grams. What is the density of this block of wood? Well, once again, we're going to use that equation. Density equals mass divided by volume. And in the space for mass, we see that it is 75.6 grams. So I'm going to place 75.6 grams right there in the numerator. And then the volume is found by taking the length times the width times the height. So all we have to do is multiply these three dimensions by each other, 5.0 centimeters times 6.0 centimeters times 3.0 centimeters and we find that the volume of this rectangularly shaped object is right around 90 cubic centimeters. So to find the density all we have to do is take 75.6 grams divided by 90 cubic centimeters. And so the answer is 0.84 grams per cubic centimeter. So don't leave out the units. If we have the mass in grams and the volume in cubic centimeters, the units will be grams per cubic centimeter. Any legitimate unit of mass divided by any legitimate unit of volume will give us a very good unit of density. Now let's take this one step further. So let's say that the density of water at this temperature is 1.00 gram per cubic centimeter. Would the block of wood in that previous problem float in water or will it sink in water? Well, let's take a look at the comparisons here. We said that the density of water is about one gram per cubic centimeter and the density of the block of wood was about 0.84 grams per cubic centimeter. Now the way this works is something that is less dense than a liquid will float in that liquid. On the other hand, if an object is more dense than the liquid, it will sink in the liquid. So since the density of wood is less than the density of water, we can say that that wood block is going to float 
in water. If for some reason we had a block that was over one gram per cubic centimeter in density, that one would sink, wouldn't it? Now let's take a look at another object. It worked out kind of nicely that in the last problem, we had a block of wood that was regularly shaped. It was rectangularly shaped. And to find the volume, all we had to do was take the length times the width times the height. Well, most of the time, objects are not that regularly shaped. They have an irregularity to them. Let's take a look at this question. It says an irregularly shaped piece of metal has a mass of 21.91 grams. To determine its volume, a student drops the piece of metal into a graduated cylinder containing 24.50 milliliters of water and finds that its volume rises to 26.95 milliliters. What is the density of the metal? So here we have a piece of metal that's irregularly shaped. Now once again, we're still going to use the same equation. Density is still equal to mass divided by volume. Now here, the mass is 21.91 grams, as the problem tells us. So that goes in the numerator, as it always would. But what's the volume of this piece of metal? Well, notice that since it's irregularly shaped, we can use water displacement to find its volume. We basically take the final volume, the 26.95 milliliters, and we subtract the initial volume, which is 24.50 milliliters. So when we do that, we find that the volume of this irregularly shaped piece of metal is about 2.45 milliliters. And that's a very common and simple way to find the volume of any object. We can use water displacement. You take an object, uh, perhaps a, a cup or a graduated cylinder or a beaker, put some water in there, take a measurement, drop the object in, and see by how much the water level rises. And so that's what we have here. So all we have to do is take the 21.91 grams and divide that by 2.45 milliliters, and we find that the volume of this object is about 8.94 grams per milliliter. And we can actually take that density that we have calculated, and we can match it up to the densities of some common metals. And we'd find that, as it turns out, copper has a density almost exactly equal to that. So we can safely say that this chunk of metal is probably copper. So we can actually identify objects based upon their density. I hope you learned something from this video. If you liked what you saw here, please consider smashing that thumbs up button. I really do appreciate it. Hope to see you in a future video where we can learn some more chemistry together.